Okay. Okay. So hello everyone, and then today we're gonna we're gonna cover the and also study the chapter twelve, like gradient boosting. Gradient boosting is one of the kind of commonly used one of the commonly used the machine learning algorithm for the successful prediction for the classification. So. It is kind of like a shell theory and constantly the each tree learning and improving the previous one. So well, let's start. So in the in the prerequisites, it actually have these things. So what is uh, about the thing is uh, for the gradient boosting model, we actually use the DVM and XD boost. Uh, for the for the this uh, gradient boosting model, actually DVM and XD boost is the uh, is the uh, two 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 packages that uh, uh, people commonly used in in conducting the gradient uh, gradient boosting model, and then also we still using the AMS train data. So okay, uh, I, I just yeah. have one comment there. Okay, just to uh -huh. make sure that everyone you know uh -huh. knows what's happening. Uh, -huh. uh that package uh gbm mm -hmm. uh it's not been uh you know it, it's not been uh, uh actively uh, developed okay mm, this uh, one yeah since, since uh you know since some some time mm. and you can see it in the in the github mm -hmm. repository of that package uh you mm -hmm. can see that we're just going to maintain it for example mm -hmm. if something you know uh, changes in base r Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to maintain it, but we're not going to be mm -hmm. developing it. Mm -hmm. So they they have a new package called mm -hmm. GBM. If I'm mistaken, GBM three, GBM three. That's the one that is more current. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But but because XGBoost, you know, is mm -hmm. very uh, popular and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and it's very efficient. It's, uh, you'll see that's very efficient. Mm. Uh, and it's actively developed. It's developed constantly. Mm. So I would say that if you are going to use a gradient boosting, you know, uh, package in R, at least you should be using XGBoost. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, GBM three, you can use it, but it's not going to be, you know, as uh, as complete as, or as mm. efficient as the XGBoost. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay. but GBM is not is it's not you know since some time since a couple of years, it's mm -hmm. not currently uh, you know de developed. It's just maintained. Mm -hmm. So GBM three is the one from these guys, from the mm -hmm. authors that is uh that that is being maintained. Okay. Uh, okay. Been... okay. 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 Yeah. So I also saw that XG boost because uh, it's actually in in this one because. Uh, I think that I have explained about the propensity score matching. So propensity score matching also use the gradient boosting model. And then XG boost is one of the packages used used in the those experimental kind of analysis. So XG boost is a kind of like, I also know that about the XG boost is the one of the packages that used by the gradient boosting model. So right. And yeah. and another thing that you know, it will be, it will be helpful. Uh, mm. You know, for for everyone that sees the video, mm. is that apart from SGBoost, there's another uh, package mm. that also is uh, very efficient and sometimes it's, it it uh, it surpasses SGBoost, which mm. is called LightGBM. Ah, uh, okay. and LightGBM yeah. is a uh, is a product from Microsoft. Okay, uh. Microsoft is are the ones that are you know behind the, the development of the package and like gbm uh in the recent years has been a, a par with xgboost or you know surpass it and also is extremely efficient in terms mm. of uh you know uh execution time mm. uh, very efficient so oh, okay uh, so let, let let me uh you know uh, keep 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 the discussion mm. i'll put in the chat the uh, the link to the package uh oh, like GP. Okay. and it's and it's also as a boost is also you know uh cran uh cran mm. approved okay oh okay so that that's that's a good thing 
<laughs> that's a good thing. No, oh, okay. Cool. So thank you very much. And then so in part uh, in here, actually in the textbook, they actually using the GBM and XG boost all together. So okay, so and then uh as we can see, we keep using the our AMS train data. So in here and then response variable is uh, definitely the sales price. So our goal is the uh, predicting the sales price and then uh, and then uh, classifying the, our housings based on the this one. So and then let's move down. So how boosting works is a uh, kind of like uh, most of the these kind of a uh, model is a kind of a single predictive model like a linear kind of things. But the thing is, a uh, boosting is a kind of like a general kind of algorithm. To, so the building up is uh, some of the from the simple model we just uh, try to building up the some prediction algorithm. But the thing is, it is more like effective. Like, uh, uh, if we have a kind of like a very high, uh, high uh, data set with the uh, high biases and then you know, low variances kind of things. And then, and then, but the thing is, uh, this one is actually kind of a generalizable kind of approaches for the any type of the data set. So this one uh, can be, that's the, how it works. And then uh, it is kind of like, uh, in here at the bottom. So as you can see in the figure. So actually this one is a uh, main idea is the boosting is uh, adding the new model to the ensemble sequentially. So it's a kind of a step-by-step, -step, kind of a linear, kind of a step-by-step -step kind of process. So in here, as you can, as the name actually indicates, the boosting actually attacks the bias and variance trade-off by starting with the weak model. So they actually have a very weak decision tree with a few splits, and then they, keep try to reiterating those kind of a process and then get start to get into the uh making the that decision tree more like a, a little bit more complicated or more branching now you know to get the more better uh, better explanations based on the uh, starting from the weak model as a starting point so and then they do not they're gonna start to keep improving the their by their biases and uh, their variance or vari variance for the variation in the explain the our sample into the into the more better classifications. That's the how this one works. So as you can see in here at the bottom, like a sequential. So it is a keep keep linearly going on. So first one we actually train them and then the starting this weak model and then uh, keep finding the, some errors and then uh, based on the errors, model gonna be improved and then uh, keep going on like this. And then, so what is the good thing about the, these approaches is that they actually uh, improving the, their model based on the result of the previous weak, what is called the weak model. So previous outcome of the model, they and then are uh, finding the error from the those things and then uh, they can keep training the their model. So important component is the boosting, as you can see here, is this like uh, in here like a base ladder, like boosting is the framework. Like I uh, keep it uh, like I said, keep iterating with uh, any weak learning model, right? And then and then it allows you to the that when we find in the error from the in the middle of the those uh, modeling development, and then I keep plugging the those kind of uh, uh various crises the weak learners, and then that's the kind of things. So we have a very base learner, and then uh, training the weak model, like a uh, error rate is uh, slightly better than the random guessing, and then. Each model in sequence is going to be slightly improved upon the performance of the previous one. So that's what I'm saying. So in the in the figure at the top, we actually saying is the based on the keep training the that error, uh, finding identifying the those error and then uh, 
uh, gradient boosting keep uh, improving the model by correcting the, those errors. And then sequence of training with the respect to the errors. So that's the kind of kind of based on the actually this one is a basic components at the same time. This one is also shows about the basic process of the how gradient boosting works. Okay. And then fit the decision tree of the data, because this one is a this one is a just kind of a basic step, flow of the flow of those steps, and then we put the next decision tree to the residual of the previous one, like uh, H1x is a y minus F1x, is a kind of like a prediction values. And then add this new tree to the algorithm, like uh, this one, gonna be adding to here. And then also calculating about the H2x for the this, like a uh, uh, finding the differences, which is the error term, and then I keep adding those kind of a model. And then uh, those kind of, in this way, the model keep improving, and then I keep minimizing the our classification biases and then uh, improving the, our variance, variation of the, explain the, uh, our data sample through the, through the classification, okay? So, so if we can generalize this one is it's a kind of a keep adding. So that means in here, like a sigma, and then this is actually means it is a keep adding, adding the adding the this kind of a residual kind of a model, and then that actually improves improves our decision tree models. That's the how it works. And then when we scroll down here, it is actually shows about the single uh, example. So like uh, in the first attempts, it looked like uh, just kind of a flat. It's a very weak model, weakest model, and then we start there. And then uh, this blue line actually represents about the most kind of like a fitted kind of a, kind of a line. Uh, curve, and then uh, first one we slightly move up like uh, like this one, and then uh, move up, keep going on, and then uh, is try to keep going on, try to fit in the model, as you can see, sixty four one twenty eight, and then uh, if you can have a one one hundred or one thousand and twenty four kind of a uh, iteration, we almost uh, got the got the very close to the actual blue curve kind of model that actually have a minimum minimum a uh, minimum biases and then the maximum amount of the variation to explain the model. Okay. And then the other one is the kind of a gradient distance, distance kind of model. This one is actually kind of a in here as you can see here the minimizing the sum function of the residual. So it is kind of a finding the point about the that that minimizing the error term. Okay. So it is actually loss uh, like a typically minimizing the loss function and what is called the cost function of the model. So it is how to minimizing this kind of a cost function, I would say. That is actually what is called the most decent. So whenever we have uh, some of the uh, kind of a space, uh, two dimensional or three dimensional spaces, what we can find is the lowest point of the cost model in here, in this case. And then there, if you have a one, one another variable that one, one predictor variable, it might have a, like maybe this, this kind of uh, uh, like uh, like this kind of a uh, 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 3D 3D surface model, and then uh, whenever we have uh, this one, it, it, we have to find uh, this lowest point. Maybe if we have a uh, another another variable, it is about the four dimensional model, so we cannot visualizing it. 
But anyway, this one is a kind of like what this one called. And also, maybe there might be other cases called uh, if we do the this kind of a 3D model, maybe there might be the, this kind of a curvy uh, bottom, like a multiple bottom of the cost model. And then among the, these things, we what we can do is to keep training the those model we have to find in the minimizing the this bottom line of the loss function. That's the kind of uh, our goal. And then uh, this is also the same for the gradient distance model. Okay. So when you can see here, we keep what we do is the, from the starting from here, and then we keep trying to approaching going to the bottom and then try to cross to the minimum or, to, or get to the point or the minimum point that allows us to the minimize the deep kind of loss function value. That's the how gradient to this model is about. Maybe if you have, like I said, if you have another X predictor, it, it will be the three dimensional. Okay. And then let's move down. So gradient distance, distance, uh, distance is a kind of like a, uh, how we can try to try to finding the minimum is the kind of like important. So like a, like a, this kind of a, what this figure shows is a, what is called a learning rate. It is kind of like a size of the steps, which means that this kind of interval, how we can step out to the, this value. It is a two B, it takes, it actually skip the, this kind of a minimum value. And then it is a too small. It takes too much time to get to the point at the bottom. And then if, if we cannot even get to the point based on the, our iteration rate. So how we can try to control the, this learning rate is the very important. Because in case of the to be, maybe if you can step up like this, and then maybe next one is here and here, and here, and then if you actually have uh, some of the bar, uh, at the upper limit of the loss functions, when you get to the point of the, this loss function, maybe there might be the, these kind of things might be happen. And then it keep going on like this and then get to the, anyway, it's a close to get to the point, but it is a too big. Learning rate is uh, kind of like a skip the, this kind of a minimize function. And then uh, sometimes it cannot produce, it cannot find in the, those minimal functions or maybe mistakenly finding the, that minimum function uh, point. If it is the uh, learning rate is a uh, too big, it is uh, too small, it slowly moved down to the, this area. And then that also not that allows us to the, get to the point to the minimum start or loss functions or uh, cost uh, function value, okay? So any questions or anything add so far? Yeah, um, we'll see in practice that that learning rate, which is one of the most important happy parameters for this type of uh, algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, we have to uh, tune it, mm. okay? Yeah. So uh, we, can, we can give a range Usually we give a range of values, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to tune and then mm -hmm. let the, you know, uh, with a cross validation uh, mm -hmm. method, mm -hmm. let the, let the algorithm, you know, try different values of the learning rate and other para hyperparameters. Mm -hmm. And then eventually at the end, you will get a model that best, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the best model with the hyperparameters that fit your Mm -hmm. uh you know your your data set yeah okay. right yeah 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 because uh, definitely the learning rate is crucial uh here because of what you're saying mm -hmm. uh if the value is too big you're going to miss the mm -hmm. global minima if it's mm -hmm. too small it's going to take too too long mm -hmm. so uh you have to you know tune it and give a range let's start from let's say a small value to a higher value okay mm -hmm. yeah right so how we can try to those, like, uh, how say about the interval? 
to finding out those loss function is a quite crucial in this mm -hmm. case because that actually allows us to the get the get the point close to the minimum number of the loss function or maybe just equal to the those cost loss functions so that's the kind of important things and then in here as you can see at the bottom it is actually how it gonna be works like uh, this one is actually showing to the two two dimension about you can just uh, thinking about that this one is kind of like uh, this this three dimensional kind of things like this right like this and then you can just find in the those minimum points in the in the bottom one like a top of the this this big ball i would say <laughs> okay and then when you go up to the top it actually moving the three dimensionally and then uh, going up to the down to the this point right you start from here and then keep going down and then get to the minimum point at the very bottom of the point that minimize the loss functions okay so uh so let's move to the basic gvm okay oh, oh, oh. Mm, yeah here so so there is actually multiple variants of the gvm and the basic gvm is kind of like a very simplest way we can try to uh try to train in the model so single gvm contains a two category of the uh two category of the hyperparameter like a boosting parameter and then a three specific parameters so in case of the, these two parameters actually include uh, how we can setting up the number of a tree in a sequence so how we can try to iterating the number of a tree to training the our model that is actually kind of a, a important because whenever we have a developing the tree and then gradient boosting keep calculating the those kind of a cost function and then uh, that cost functions by while calculating the those cost function and then uh, keep gradient boosting keep improving the those model by correcting the those biases and variances and then a learning rate is another hyper uh, hyper parameter that we have to look at so What's the interval of the, those things to finding the minimized function, minimized loss functions, right? And then here is also the, uh, two main three three parameter is the three depths. So how many how many branching out? So it it usually in depths of the three to eight. I usually using the like a five or six, yeah, three to eight, or sometimes I use the 10, depending on that. But if we use the many, many depths, like a branching out depths, that actually costing a lot of uh, computation time. So, so, the, so we have to try to make a balance about the, how we can do this. And also, I strongly recommend you if you if this is kind of a rule of thumb, and then uh, you just uh, say about the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then uh, keep testing the our loss function depending on the this kind of a three depth, and then uh, finding the that minimized minimized functions by using the learning rate. This might be the kind of a big table try and then try to find in the then minimize loss function and then uh, that's going to be the our optimal model that we can find about the this G gradient boosting approaches and then implementation imp implementation is the based on our gbm packages or x boosting packages we use the gbm and then a gbm fit to find the fit uh, uh functions and then in here default setting gbm is actually learning rate is a 0 0.001 it is very small 
it is very small in moving down to the dead, dead cost functions. So we have to sometimes adjust in those things. Okay. And then a defaulting uh, number of a tree is the 1000. It is also not that very sufficient. So they said about the, we start with the learning rate is the 0.1 because this is a too small. So we're going to start a little bit stepping much better, uh, much wider, and then increasing the number of trees to train. Okay, so that means we reiterating the, our model more than the 100 and then uh, with the learning rate is the 0 0.01. And also cross validation is the tenfold kind of a cross validation in here. So as you can see at the bottom in here, actually we we have a kind of a very good discussion about the DSS seed, like uh, like uh, last few weeks, and then uh, we actually found uh, identifying the, some interesting finding depending on the <laughs> by the way depending on the some some packages and then our versions, it the number in the textbook and then uh, our R actually produced the depending on the version is uh, quite different so which is uh, quite interesting but yeah anyways so this one is assessed for the uh, replicability of the model to so that we can get the same value whenever we running to the model and then our formula is a kind of a very simple like a gbm function is also the same mechanism that we actually use to the, the other kind of a machine learning technique or machine learning uh, the R function for the, the other machine learning techniques. So we set up the formula and then a data set and then a Gaussian is the kind of a, how we can see the loss function. Like a Gaussian is a more like a regressive kind of a modeling approaches. And then a number of three is the 5,000, which is that we're gonna keep improving the R model. Uh, <laughs> to up to the 5,000 iteration process to get to the point about the, that good beneath of the feet kind of a model. And then a shrink is, is the learning rates is the 0 0.01 and then interaction depths. I don't know about this interaction depths. And then this CB40 is the we also know about the validation, but I'm not sure about this interaction depths and then uh, minimum observation in a code. I think this one is a kind of like a three to 10 is a kind of like a, I think the interaction depth is a, this one is the number of a three depths. Yeah. Like how many benching out we're gonna use. And then anyone can you, can me, can you tell me about the, what's the minimized observation in code? This one is a kind of like a sample size kind of things to developing the these tree or because this looks like a minimized observations in node, right? Ah, yeah. yeah. So still, this one, this one is the minimum the amount of the sample for the each node, right? Right. When we uh, when we branching out like this, and then uh, at the bottom, the other, bottom gonna be the ten, right? Correct. Uh, the the leaf, our prediction, uh, it it needs at least ten, ten observations. Mm. Mm, okay, so yeah, yeah which okay. controls can... also controls yeah. the 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 depth also of the of the tree. Mm, yeah. Okay. So these two control the, the the interaction depth and the minimum observation node controls the depth of the tree. Okay. So three steps means like this, like uh, like this, and then when we looking at the, at the bottom of the leaf, like a bottom of the branching, this number of uh, observation, minimum number of observation should be more than, at least more than 10. That's the how this one is about and then uh, this one is about. Okay, now right. I can understand, okay. Yeah. All right, so, and then we have the findings index for the number of trees with the minimum cross validation error which is the minimum, and then that's the actually best one. And then when we get to the MSC and RMSC, it is this one. So I think they compare to the, the other previous 
uh, the other machine learning technique in the previous sections. As far as I know, this one is a quite good, I think the minimum number of the this error, right? Because the average prediction gonna be have a deep amount of the money differences. It is still a lot of money differences when we try to con uh, estimating about the uh, sales price, but compared to the, the other machine learning technique, model functions, uh, in in the in the this textbook, I think that this one is a kind of like a minimum number of the uh, square error, I guess. <laughs> okay, so and then we can be just show that the, this SSC like uh, this one is actually achieved in the one uh, one thousand and two hundred nineteen three. So in here. When we looking at the standard error loss, like this one is a maybe kind of a loss function. And then these are the kind of graphs like this. And then when we get to the, this point is the kind of a minimum error, which is the 1,293. Okay. And then, and then also when we try to try to do the, this kind of a gradient boosting model. What's the kind of a tuning technology? So how we can tune the, our hyperparameter, okay? So the first one is, so good approaches they actually suggesting is to choose the relative high learning rate. Cause uh, as we can see at the at the top, GBM in case of the GBM functions, the default value of the learning rate is a 0 0.001, which is a very small number. So, and then the rule of thumb about the general tuning technology is a 0.1 gonna be works, but it is a somewhere between 0.05 to the 0.2 should work of course to the, this wide range of the problem. So this one is a more like a rule of thumb for the how we can setting up the learning rate. But the problem is uh, we have to set up the relatively high learning rate and then determine the optimal number of a tree. This is also another important hyperparameter. And then fix the, these two parameter, like, uh, like I said, so maybe, maybe column gonna be, gonna be the learning rate. And then the row gonna be the, uh, maybe uh, the number of three. And then in, in each cell, we can actually calculating about the loss function, like a SS, uh, like a MSCs or RMSC. And then we just are finding the, what's the minimum number for this and then, uh, and then from when, right? So that's the kind of a graph that we saw up to the top just in the in the in the previous sections like uh, like this right okay so this one is the general kind of a tuning technologies and then and then in here it says about the this one is actually requires a lot of a tree iteration functions so it actually computationally kind of a, a little bit uh, long take, uh, longer takes of time. Like our model take a little bit over two minutes to train, but any significant impact to the training time based on the learning rate. But following Greece took up the 10 minutes, oh, okay. So, but depending on the, how we can setting up the, these learning rates and then a number of trees or tree depths, computational time gonna be very depending on the those hyperparameter, okay. So in the grid search, we're gonna try to conduct in the grid search in here, like a, like a, like I said about the making the table for this, like a, it is actually grid search, right? And then we can actually setting up the, this various learning rate. And then this one is uh, not available in, as a initializing it. And then we, by using the four functions, we can execute in the about the discrete research search. 
based on the this formula, like a training. And then, and then when we try to get to the result, we can actually finding the RMSE and then what's the time and then what's the number of three that minimizing the this RMSE error. So when you can see here, depending on when you can see here in the this five different result, we have uh, the first law. Actually, we actually arranging the this one like a mini smallest to the largest, like right, based on the RMSC, right? So in that case, uh, learning if we setting up the learning rate for the 0 0.05, and then that actually producing the minimum RMSC value at the three number of the 2375 iteration, and then it takes time about the two. Well, slightly over than the two minutes. So this one, like a learning rate was 0.05 and then a 2,375 three, gonna be the, our optimal amount of the of the value hyperparameter tuning value that allows us to minimizing the our error. Okay, that's the how we can interpret the this result, and then. And then also we can also kind of uh, uh, setting up our learning rate is optimal level and then tune the three specific parameter like uh, interaction depths. So how many branching out we gonna try to do? And then what's the, our minimize the observation for the each uh, down to the node? And then the same, same mechanism, we gonna try to keep learning to the discrete search and then when we arranging the this one, and then we can find that the RMSC value is a slightly much smaller, like in here. So when we have a five, minimize the five observation of the each tree and then the interaction depth, like a number of which is of the tree is the five. And then a shrinkage means like a, our optimal running rate is this one. And then number of trees is the 4,000 gonna be shows the minimized RMSC errors. So that's the kind of our tuning, final optimizing the tuning parameter we have to choose, right? For the prediction of the classification. Any questions so far, anything? No, good. No, that's uh, really good technique just to, uh -huh. to tune first the learning rate before the other parameters mm -hmm. it was a really interesting yeah. approach yeah because that's the reason why gvm is a more like a robusting kind of approaches so even if we can have a very messy data set once it, it cleaned up and then when we apply to the, this gvm depending on our research question or research context gvm gonna be produced the most of the one of the most of the first kind of value and also it is allows us to the optimizing the our hyperparameter tuning it, it is a more uh, in more detailed and then uh, by setting up the those detailed parameter that actually allows us to the predicting the much better uh pre prediction power compared to the other model so it actually has a very efficiency when it comes to the tuning the hyperparameter at the same time in terms of the predictions it also produce the very good prediction power, depending on our uh, our research and in our research questions. So it it is a very great one. So that's our say. And then twelve point four is actually what is called the stochastic uh, GVM. So I think this is a seven fifty. But do you want me to keep uh, finishing the this one, right? Because we have only have a ten minutes left, so I'm gonna try to move it a little bit faster. We could so, leave it for next week. I think just to. Uh, what uh, do you okay. think, Ricardo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so no, it's it's fine with me. You know, if you can continue or stop it here, it depends uh, on the piano. Okay. So I'm gonna try to as as far as possible right now. Maybe. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then stochastic, actually, once we understand about the basic mechanism of the GBM, stochastic GBM is also kind of the same mechanism. So it is not, not, not that different from the, from the basic GBM. So in here, like uh, use the same logic. So like I said, same logic and then updating the boost algorithm accordingly. So stochastic GBM is a kind of another updating of the this stochastic gradient boosting. So stochastic means a kind of a based on the likelihood of the goodness speed or probability of the, this kind of a, uh, three functions. And then uh, it also allows us to the getting to the point to the minimizing the lost function, another way to the see the uh, get to the lost function value. So in here, there is a few variants of the stochastic uh, boosting. So it is a hyperparameter like a subsample rows from the each tree, and then a sub subsample column, and then creating, and then column be uh, before the considering each split with the, these trees. So like uh, subsampling the, these kind of uh, row and column values, and then we're going to try to uh, calculating the probability to get to the point of the minimizing the, those cost functions, uh, not to the, try to analyze the entire kind of a uh, data set. So implementation is also pretty the same, like uh, same for the grid search, like a uh, sample rate this and then grid strategy is like a randomly discrete and then MSCs and then also same tolerances and then a rounding and then a deep runtime is the setup. Uh, and then perform the grid search like a GBM and then Y and X gonna be defined and then all of the this kind of a parameter is defined. It is already, we already saw this one before. And then we have to try to make a uh, so far the, our modeling performances like this, right? So like a sample rate and then a sample rate per tree and then a sample rate is a kind of like a get to the point for the, our MSC value. So it is actually staying for the, these things, but the thing is, by try to do the more like a sampling variance of the sampling rate, those MS values are gonna be different. And then this one is the minimized point, minimized MS value for the, when we have a 0.05 sample rate and then a 0.05 sample rate per tree. And then we can get to the, these things like a minimize the MSC values, okay? So, so if a sampling value, so best the sampling value is very low in here. Like, uh, so that means the further research is gonna be the more beneficial to the evaluating the more low values that we can find. Cause uh, that if we can assume that the test sample value and then the rate is uh, kind of like uh, our, how we can uh, uh, try to, Try to finding the our or uh, uh, sampling uh, get to the creating the subsample from the our data set. So we can actually get to the to get to the most better point is we actually try to learn the another kind of a performance kind of model like this, and then we can find the this RMSC value or MSC value in here by using the HQO performances, like a best model uh, in here, the get to the model for the base ID, this one. So actually base ID is uh, this one means kind of, like, uh, as we can see at the top, we can find that the that at the top row model is the best model. And then uh, we actually, by using the that model ID, we actually get to the uh, more best model, like uh, making the formula, and then try to calculating the this kind of a truncated value and then this RMSC values. Okay. Uh, one yeah. thing to notice, one thing to mm -hmm. notice is that those metrics 
that you are uh -huh. calculating. Uh huh. If you can put it back. Oh uh, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, those, those metrics that oh, you are calculating. Shit. Oh uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, oh. Yeah. Go go a little bit further. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah, those metrics are uh, in, in sample, okay? Mm. It's, from, it's from the training data. Yeah, right. So in order to get a better, you know, uh, evaluation of your metric, mm -hmm. you have to test it to the test data, right? Mm -hmm. You know, to the out, 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 of, out of sample. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. You know, to yeah. see if there is an overfitting problem or mm -hmm. if, you are, if your model can generalize. You yeah. know, with uh, right they, the new data that it's not you know he hasn't seen, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So th this is the uh, you know it's 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 uh, it's very important to see that this is the training, mm -hmm. uh, the metrics for the training data. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have to apply it. You have to apply it for the test data and see you know what is the result, and um, if if there are too you know if if, if there's a discrepancy too wide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the results then you know there's mm -hmm. an overfitting problem you have to go back right and try to mm -hmm. see you know if uh, if yeah. if your tree is too complex try mm -hmm. to simplify it but then if if it's up par with that then you have a good model mm. yeah right so yeah so far we actually keep training the model in here right because uh, we keep using the that from the that ams train uh, train data. We actually keep training the our decision tree model by using the gradient boosting, and then uh, this one is another kind of approaches that we can use for the stochastic kind of a value, like a sampling value for the 0 0.5, 0 0.75, one or 0.25. This is actually probability of the sample uh, sampling uh, uh, sampling values, right? from the from the our entire data set and then we can get to the this model id and then get the model and then testing the performances and then we can get to the these kind of values so i think this is it and then uh okay uh we uh okay xc boost yeah, Actually, one, one, this one, one, thing, yeah. One, one thing that was missing there is that you know uh app applying that uh, uh that model that model to the test data oh uh, okay you know that that's what is missing there because it, it just mm -hmm. it just gives you the training data but the training data is the one that you are seeing okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so that that's fine but we mm -hmm. have to you know that the next step will be to apply that model to the test data yeah and see right. if you can get the same results from mm -hmm. the train from the test data in the training data yeah okay. yeah uh, and then also we have to move to the x xc boost and then uh, we are, i need to explain about the feature interpretation and then a final thought final thought is uh, not that hard but the thing is xc boost is uh, too many things we have to in explain so it's already eight o'clock so do you want me to keep going on or maybe if we can move to the next week? Because uh, this one can... actually this one actually yeah. takes yeah. Yeah, I th I think we can stop. Um oh, yeah. Uh, what we what we should do uh -huh. is to try to see if we can replicate that uh that GBM, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 procedure. Mm -hmm. and, and then you know at least in my part what i'm going to do is you know uh do the the the, the, the testing you know uh, apply the uh, model to the testing uh yeah to see right. if there's an overfitting etc to have a more complete picture you know mm -hmm. what is going okay. on okay 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 right okay yeah, so I, we, uh, we can stop here yeah yeah because xc xc boost is a kind of like a kind of like a quite critical kind of a concept and then a modeling approach is because uh, they compared to the basic GBM and then stochastic GBM is uh, quite similar to one on uh, each other but XC boost is a kind of a 
on, uh, given that the this one is uh, one of the most commonly used model then we have whenever we have a data set so i think that is it is very important to understanding the how we can conduct in the sg boost to them so could so i think that we can wrap up uh this one and then i'm gonna move to the uh keep keep going on the this one maybe i think that it might be takes about 25 minutes or something 20 or 25 minutes uh, next week and then uh, who gonna do the uh uh do the chapter 13 uh any idea i think it was uh mateo oh uh, okay so maybe i think that i might to ask him about the uh, mateo can be uh if he right. can willing to do the deep learning part or not Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 already working on the support vector mm -hmm. machines already. Uh, uh -huh. So if Mateo can do the deep learning, then I can I can follow up with the with the SVM. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So so you're saying is uh, can you do the deep learning? Maybe if Mateo cannot do that. Ah uh, no no no. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 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 not doing the deep learning yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. So if if, if Mateo. Uh, uh -huh. you know can do it can do it uh -huh. then i can you know because he, you have mateo too in the supporting vector machines mm -hmm. uh what we can do you know if mateo can do the deep learning mm -hmm. then you know he can he can be sure that then i i, I can follow with the support vector mm -hmm. machines she he uh -huh. doesn't have to keep going okay uh, okay gotcha gotcha okay but check, uh -huh. check, check with him Okay. Uh, okay. I will. I will try to ask. I will ask him about the, uh, if he's uh he's willing to cover the that chapter thirteen, cause uh next we we gonna spend uh maybe twenty or twenty five minutes about the uh, wrapping up the chapter twelve. At the same time, we are gonna try to do the maybe, maybe just a slightly cover about the first half of the deep learning, cause uh. When I looking at this chapter thirteen, it also have a lot of uh, content mm -hmm. underneath oh, yeah. the chapter thirteen. So I think that chapter twelve and then a chapter thirteen has a quite a good amount of the contents underneath the each chapter. I think it's the same thing for supporting the machine and the other kind of uh the other kind of a machine learning technique. So I hope that we can cover the one chapter per week, but. Depending on the, how our explanation go 